Thank you, Gary. Good evening, everyone. What a great group. Everybody smile real big. I promise it won't hurt. Now, you all have been smiling. And it's so good to see this place so full. And um, Have you enjoyed Vision Conference so far? Well, I believe it's going to go to a whole new level each day. And, um, you know, the last five years, even before I started, before I moved here uh, two and a half years ago, the last three months of every year since 2018, I have asked the Lord in times of prayer and fasting the last three months of the year just to see if he will show me anything that is coming the next year or beyond. Now, what, somebody says, why do, you, why do you say 2024 and beyond? Because I understand that there are some things um, that affect the timing of events. Some prophecies are conditional. Nineveh is an example of that. Hezekiah was told to get your house in order. You're going to die. Remember? Then because of his response, he turned his face to the wall and repented. And the Lord extended time, 15 years to his life. And so I say 2024 and beyond just because I believe that these things, in a New Testament context, God gives us these things as prayer strategies to know what to pray, how to pray, and, um, and, and even verses that would apply to the specific prophecy, if it's talking about the nations, if it's talking about the economy, if it's talking about education, whatever. There are verses that go along with uh, this idea of taking prophetic words um, and praying into them. And I, I do want to say I do believe that many of these prophecies... Um, will uh, happen. I just don't know exactly when and the, uh, the level of their fulfillment is oftentimes determined upon how people pray or if we pray. Um, I believe prayer is what's kept this world from being ended a long time ago as we know it. Now, last year, well, the last two years I've been here, I've done this, even the years prior to that, when I still pastored in Indiana, I, um, I did it then as well. And just because I believe that the Lord wants to take the prophetic to a, a new level, a higher level. He wants us to believe and expect that uh, we can um, see, just like in the book of Acts, remember Agabus, the same Agabus who gave a personal prophetic word to Paul. Remember when he took the garment, he bound it around his hands. He said, the man whose garment this belongs to, I'm paraphrasing, if he goes to this place, he will be arrested. And that was a personal prophetic word, as oftentimes you see them given in services and such. But then Agabus also, in another context, gave not a personal word this time. He gave an international word. And he predicted and prophesied by the Holy Spirit that there was a coming famine. And they actually knew how to be prepared. So the church had an advantage because they had prophetic people who... Um, could tap into the eternal realm where everything is already finished. It's just waiting to manifest in earth and time. How many of you know that? Psalms says, in his book, all the days of our lives were written when as yet there was none of them. God does not determine where we spend eternity, but he does have a perfect plan, uh, and, and nothing is beyond his knowing. He knows what's going to happen and what's coming before it comes. Now, this is one of the reasons why we did the 40 Prophecies book. Um, have any of you, just curious, have you picked it up in the bookstore while you've been here? How many of you? Yeah, so several of you. Okay. How many of you had it before? Even, even more. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that. And you notice how in the book there were prayer strategies with each prophecy. 
Now, if you remember, I shared a prophetic word here. I also shared it uh, on Sid Roth's um, show, and I also shared it on Charisma and different outlets about so goes Israel, so goes America. And that's where I saw the 12 sleeper, dormant terrorist cells in America. And if you haven't heard that word, that was just a couple of months ago. And um, it was interesting because I, I think uh, my word on that or my, my dream on that was one of the first uh, that came out because I shared it. It was I had the dream like within hours of October 7th. But then you notice several of the other prophetic voices started seeing the same thing. And I believe the Lord showed them just like he believed he showed me. And it's that is that this can be lessened if we take action with our prayers, if we take action with how we vote. Because a lot of this stuff uh, that's happening in our nation right now with you know, millions of people pouring into our border, we don't know who they are, all of this stuff, uh, that the elections determine and affect those things. And so many of our large cities, New York City, L.A., I mean, all, they're being overrun right now. And it's not, it's not racist or, or cold-hearted to say a nation has to have boundaries. You, you know what I mean? So that's just an example. Now, last year I prophesied several things. It was well documented. Um, and uh, just a few things. For instance, uh, some of the uh, prophetic words that I gave uh, at the end of 2022, and now we're at the end of 2023, I talked about uh, Chinese uh, bribery uh, being exposed, uh, foreign monies being exposed, involving the H-U-N-T-E-R B-I-D-E-N laptop and business dealings and all of that. I also talked about how that President Biden's health was going to progressively continue to regress and right now as we speak the liberal media and the Democratic Party is frantically behind the scenes and I have good sources they're trying to figure out whether he can actually run again or not. Many of them are ready to throw him under the bus now. Um, we're seeing mortgage interest rates raising. Uh, the South China Sea issue, uh, it's starting to happen. There's already been some level of awkward uh, bumping into one another, you know, in the South China Sea. Uh, I talked about weather fires in the West. You remember Hawaii flooding in the east? Anybody see pictures in New York City when it was flooded with water just in the last couple months? Yeah. Um, the oil spill, I, I prophesied. How many of you know, a lot of, this wasn't even covered very much on the news, which blows my mind, but just south of Louisiana, the largest oil spill, over one million gallons, or barrels was it, whichever, uh, the largest oil spill since the 2010 BP oil spill happened. And um, did anybody hear about that in the news? Yeah. Uh, look, you can look it up. The uh, oil spill, just, you can just type it in, oil spill off Louisiana. And uh, it, it will tell you. I mean, there's headlines. Largest oil spill in 13 years. Um, why am I telling you all this? Is this just to say, look, I was right? No, it's that this is why we should look at these things. And we should expect to believe that God will tell us what's coming so we know how to be prepared. Just like when Agabus prophesied about the famine, the Christians were able to send uh, disaster relief and to help those in need. How many of you remember I saw an aircraft that would come down out of Canada into the U.S.? It would appear disappear, reappear, and that China was behind it. That was the Chinese spy balloon. Um, of course, there was also an F-35 that I said another aircraft would appear, disappear, and be found. The F-35, actually, this was just like two or three months ago here in South Carolina. It made uh, national headlines. 
um, the Ronald and Donald battle. There was actually a news headline this year that said, Ron versus Don. Talking about the primaries between Donald Trump and uh, Ronald DeSantis. So many things happened this year, and some things, I believe, are yet to happen. And you say, yeah, but how do you know if this is right? Like if some of these things are lessened to the degree that you said they would, or they don't happen, well, we, we want to prevent with our prayers, with our actions, and avert disasters if it's possible. And so I think the Lord lets us see enough of the prophetic to be right to say, I can trust that I should be praying about this. Does that make sense? Um, and so, to the best of my ability, and to the best of my ability to hear the Holy Spirit accurately, consistently, to the best of my ability to ascertain the voice of God with more than one confirmation, either through visions, dreams, impressions, reoccurring, I'm going to the best of my ability by the grace of God in the fear of God give you what I see. And this, I don't see everything, just but what I've been shown uh, in 2024 and beyond. How many of you are ready? All right. Now, why do I have it like this? This is a screenshot from the notes on my phone or my laptop, whichever. This was an encounter that I had May 13th, 2022, so over a year and a half ago, but it's dated at the top. The last change was June 8th. You see it, the date there at the top. Two children of the Cold War will be removed and taken out of power. Biden will be taken out of power and so will Putin pretty soon. And both will happen fairly close together. I still contend and believe that Joe Biden's days are numbered. Some people say, are you still believing that? Absolutely I am. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if something doesn't change or happen according to what I was seeing, even close to the election. And then there will be a scramble for what to do or how, how to handle it. Um, so I, do, I still believe that Joe Biden will not finish his allotted time in office and that Putin will also, his reign will come to an end as well. And I prophesied that last year, but I'm just showing you when I started seeing this. June 8th, 2022 is actually, as you see there, May 13th. And that's the bad part about notes. Like if you touch the screen accidentally or put a period there accidentally or whatever, the dictation changes, the timestamp changes. So I'm very careful. Uh, and I did a video last year, by the way, documenting, showing how most of the things I prophesied about, I started seeing back even in 2018, 2019, the vast majority of them. So think about it. The president of Russia and the president of the United States in a fairly close amount of period of time both come out of power unexpectedly or come out of power without finishing the time that was allotted to them in their term. For those two nations, for that to happen is a significant thing. So what do we pray? We pray for who will replace Putin or that Putin will turn to God in repentance. And so we pray for Joe Biden to turn to God, to repent and believe um, that he can have a Damascus Road experience. Nobody is outside the power of the cross. Nobody. On February 16th, 2019, now I want you to notice here at the top, the timestamp on this date is April 21st, 2019. So this is almost five years ago when I wrote this. On February 16, 2019, I saw a devastating earthquake hit the nation of Italy. It was a sign of the very shaking happening at Rome and at the Vatican. I'll just go so far as to say as well, 
with this prophecy, the shaking and the... Ha- Why am I sharing it this year? Because I believe the time's now. The year within the vicinity of time when that earthquake happens will also, be, I, be, I believe, be the time very close to where the shaking will happen in the Roman Catholic Church and there will be uh, leaders who will be leaders no more and I believe that goes all the way even to the top of the Roman Catholic Church. Are you tracking with what I'm saying? And this shouldn't surprise you considering that the Pope, the current Pope, just gave priests and bishops the right to bless same-sex couples. So an earthquake to hit the nation of Italy close to around the same time, the leadership of the Roman Catholic Church, not just at the top, but including the top, but others and other priests, other bishops, and all of that, many of them will be removed because of the shaking, physical shaking, which will be a sign of the shaking of the institution itself. So you see that April 21st, 2019. That is the note, uh, almost five years ago. Artificial intelligence. What's the Lord saying about that? Well, I'll say it this way. He's saying the good and the bad and the ugly. Artificial intelligence will be good and bad. And I guess really anything has that potential. But I think how it can be bad is in the wrong hands. It can lead to breaches in intelligence agencies, tampering with intelligence agencies, power grids, infrastructures, cyber attacks, power outages, but I think it will lead to uh, great medical cures in the next bit of time of significant diseases. And I think that we'll begin to see that really soon. And I don't even know how to pretend to explain how that will work. Um, But I think it it will bring that about. Now you see here at the top, this is dated November the 11th, 2022. I also, by the way, just to be clear, I had the same prophecy back in 2019. Why didn't I screenshot the one from 2019? The problem is, is because it was so far down on the list of... I started putting my prophecies on on a note, each of their own, because it was so far down. I'm willing to show it to anybody that wants to see it. In in, uh, 2019, I said that uh, that there would be a prince that would pass, that was Prince Philip, the queen's husband, and another prince who would come to a near-death experience. Something would happen or change him, and he would become a new man as his life was spared. I can show you that back in 2019. Um, And I think I did in that uh, documentary I did, Documenting the 40 Prophecies. You can find it on MorningstarTV.com or on the uh, Chris Reed Ministries, uh, Morningstar Ministries YouTube channel. I believe this is Prince Andrew. You know, I've just heard recently that there is a list coming out uh, of people who were associated with yeah EPS T-E-I-N just making sure that we don't uh, you know get cut off by social media and just trying to go around the algorithms I'm sorry if that annoys you Um, but I saw great depression come upon Prince Andrew And I believe he will overreact to a culmination of events. Several things, the loss of his mother, his legal troubles, uh, the loss of King Charles's support. And he'll go into a, a real potential mental health crisis of deep depression where he will be strongly tempted to harm himself or take his life. 
And I'm actually praying against that because I believe that it's God's will that none should perish, but that they come to repentance. So this is back in 2019 as well um, that I saw a prince whose one would pass, but another one, life would be spared at the, on the verge, on the brink of dying. I shared this last year. I'm standing on it again. And before I go on, by the way, if you, if you look up right now news articles about Prince Andrew, has anybody seen some of those articles that actually talks about he's in a place of crisis? You can Google it right now if you want to. But I shared this last year in December 2022, and I also shared it in 2019. Sadly, I think Prince Harry and Meghan will not stay together. He will see he was played a fool. I'm sorry for those of you that love to follow their story. Uh, I do think there'll be ultimately reconciliation with his family, uh, an attempt to do that with his dad in later years in his dad's life, because his dad isn't really a young man. <clears throat> You saw this one last year. I'm standing on it again. We've already started to see this happen, but I think it's going to become more pronounced as China will try to militarily attack Taiwan. Okay? I saw a naval conflict in the China Sea and a striking situation. Particularly, China will be blamed, but it will be claimed to even be an accident, I see the U.S. being affected by this. I just want to go back to watch the documentary. I also prophesied this in 2019. I saw a conflict in the South China Sea. Did anybody see that documentary where they actually went in on my phone and looked through the... Did any of you see that by chance? I'm just curious. A few of you did. If you didn't, check it out. 2019, I said there would be a conflict in the South China Sea as well so pray against war I we do not have currently a wartime president we're, we're already in a war with China we just don't know it yet it's true it started a long time ago the first shot that was fired was actually out of a lab Say no more. <laughs> Next slide. Gavin Newsom and Elizabeth Warren will set their sights on the White House once Biden is out. Remember those two names. Gavin Newsom and Elizabeth Warren. I'm not saying they're going to win the election. Um... But if they need to find someone to run in Biden's stead, or if he doesn't finish his allotted time in office, um, I'll just say it this way. I don't think that Kamala Harris could stay in power very long. I just don't. And it's, I, it's not anything to do against uh, her personally. I just don't think that she would be in power long. It would be short-lived. Now, this is a significant one. I shared this one back already. I think it was three months ago when I first shared this. Uh, and I know, I believe the Hardemans, you remember, we were together actually in California when I uh, shared this. I saw a major earthquake in California that will affect almost the entire state. Not just these small cluster ones you know, these 5.0s or whatever. And it's certain, but by the way, this is not also an Armageddon type earthquake, but it is a earthquake that will be historic in its size and um, its measurement. And I think that one of the things God is doing is shaking the bonds of wickedness off of that state. And to do that, the earth literally will shake to break free the entrenched deep 
principalities that are attached in the geography of that area that affect Hollywood and affect a lot of different places there. So remember that 2024 or shortly thereafter, I see a major earthquake that will hit California on the West Coast. And it won't just be one of the small ones, but it won't be the one I don't think either that will cause it to break off in the ocean. Okay? But I do think it will be, um, it'll, it'll be historic. It will make the news because uh, there's tremors there every day. You realize that. Um, this is an old one as well uh, from last year. And by the way, this is starting to happen. Over this last year, everything to do with J-A-N-U-A-R-Y 6th. What really happened there? Not what the media told us happened. Um, and I'm, not cer I'm certainly not saying that everybody that was there who shares the same political ideology that I do did everything right. Of course I'm not saying that. But I do think that J-A-N-U-A-R-Y-6 will be re-examined and new found information. This already started to be fulfilled this year since I prophesied it last December. And you see the date on there, November of 2022. This particular date <clears throat> will be seen as a clandestine operation with foreign money peddling its influence, Iran, Iranian, Chinese, Russian money as well. I think Speaker Mike Johnson's going to release the tapes. And I promise you in an election year, if that's done, and you can, you can clearly see he has the right to do that because it was at the Capitol. If he does that, and it's seen that there were things done there that shouldn't have been done, it's going to cause people to start having less and less sympathy on these insurrection charges. So remember, it's going to, as I said, Putin's reign will end in Russia. But here is the new part of the prophecy. And I'm serious, I say this in the name of the Lord. I see we are on the verge of a major move of God in Russia that will lead to mass conversions and the turning of a nation to God. And I believe that when that happens, that will be the fulfillment of 30 and 40 and even 100 plus year old prophecies of Russia turning to God. Amen. Next slide. Senator Mitch McConnell's career in the Senate is soon to be over. I didn't know it would get that kind of response, but <laughs> health and age will require him to, to go out. Now you say, yeah, well, he's old. Well, so does everybody else up there. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, not everybody, but you get the point. Um, and that will, his coming out of power as the Senate Minority Leader will ultimately begin the deinstitutionalization of conservative and the Republican Party. It won't, it won't just be uh, institutional Republicanism anymore. Um, because even though neither party is right or perfect in everything, uh, I will say that nobody will ever be able to win the Republican nomination as president running on the same platform that they ran on before Trump came into the picture because he brought so many new people into the party. And uh, anyways, Senator Mitch McConnell's days are numbered in the Senate and as the Senate Minority Leader. Next slide. 
I saw, now this one really concerns me, I saw a mass attack on a migrant caravan south of the U.S. border, and the, it was not good. It was criminal activity that was done, and I strongly condemn that in the strongest terms, but there were people who were migrating up that somehow were, were viciously attacked killed for the intent of scaring them away and what I ascertained from the the vision was this was the cartel's way of showing revenge because some of these groups of people at that particular time weren't allowing the cartels to control who's trafficked up through Mexico into the U.S. and that's how they put their stamp of domination down and said you either go through us or you won't go at all Do you, does that make sense um, and they, they want full control of that so I saw a terrible vicious attack uh, on them uh, and I'm praying against that in Jesus name uh, of the loss of life or violence upon anyone next slide 2024, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, will have an awakening to reality because he's not living in it right now. And I think it may have to do with uh, E-P-S-T-E-I-N list. Um, and there, even if it's not direct, there will be associations and connections that will ultimately turn the Canadian people against him. So I think his days are numbered as well. Next slide. A candidate for president will experience an assassination attempt. We're praying against that, no matter who it is. And there's many things, you know, whichever side gets attacked is going to gain sympathy. Um, and of course, that should never be any motivation, but it's just a reality. So we just need to pray that nobody tries to tamper with how people vote based off of those kind of things. So we're praying against an assassination attempt on a presidential candidate. Next slide. I shared this one over a year ago. You see the date, August 24th, 2022. This is December 30th, 2023. South Carolina. Now, when I said it in the pulpit here on a Sunday, I said it a bit different than how I wrote it, but I wrote it down because it came to me suddenly. The Palmetto State, South Carolina, will produce a president of the United States, and we'll see it in the next few years. I, I want to tell you how I set it up here this day. I said, South Carolina will see someone from the state of South Carolina on a presidential ticket. And I, you can go back and actually, that's, that's how I said it, uh, that it was on the presidential ticket, someone from South Carolina would be on the presidential ticket. And I, I can't say if it's 2024, um, but I believe that it will happen in the next uh, few years. Now, many people think that if you get a prophetic word, you should expect it to happen the next time around, and I can't guarantee that. Just like Isaiah didn't realize it was 700 years before the stuff he was prophesying was going to come to pass. Most prophets... In, in the Bible were not even vindicated till after they died as being right. But South Carolina will have someone on a presidential ticket as uh, probably vice president, but on, but, but on the presidential ticket. Um, next one. Benjamin Netanyahu's time as the prime minister of Israel is almost over. This pains me. But the war that is going on right now with Israel will enlarge to Israel's north and east. 
to not just fight Hamas, but also Hezbollah in Syria, Iraq, and Lebanon. That part was cut off. Benjamin Netanyahu, we need to be praying for the right leader to replace him when that time comes. Next. There's a new axis of evil. You remember famously President George W. Bush talked about an axis of evil in the early 2000s. What, what were they? It was Back then it was Iraq, Iran, and what was the third one? North Korea, that's right. Well, yeah, don't go too fast on me now. Uh, Iran, China, and Russia. You know, that, that's the thing, is I hate this so much because there were a lot of things that Vladimir Putin, I believe, did right at one time. But something went awry, something went wrong, and now he is actually supporting the fight against Israel right now. Whether you realize it or not, he is. It's just the truth. And so Iran, China, and Russia will unite economically and with exchange of arms and military equipment will increase between them. So exchange of military equipment, exchange of arms, and economic exchange will happen between Iran, China, and Russia, and they will stand against the U.S. and Israel in the days ahead, the days ahead, this new axis of evil. So we need to pray about that, that whatever ties are binding those three nations uh, in unity uh, for the wrong reasons that they're just severed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Germany and Belgium. Now this was back a year ago, January of 2023, but it was after the New Year's conference. But I saw two countries with a similar flag, which is Belgium and Germany. Similar colors, similar patterns, who share a pipeline. And I said, I saw a leader to stumble, a deal to crumble. Leaders of Europe continue to rise and fall. So that's kind of like the riddle, if you will. Um, so pray for Germany and Belgium. Now, how many of you remember this? This is, I've thoroughly, I've, I've been saying this now. This is the third year I've said this. A woman of color will come alongside Donald Trump to help him in his 2024 campaign. I've saw this for over two years now. I cannot say for sure who it is. I just, to be honest, I can't, I can't, and by the way, I want to make it clear, I don't, and I'm trying to think how to say this right, I don't know the, what her color is, but it doesn't matter. It, it, the fact is, I, I just know she's a woman of color. And you all know I've been saying this. How many of you remember me saying this last year and the year before? Yeah. It's looking like it may be Nikki Haley. You know, she is also from South Carolina. She was the governor of South Carolina. And she's also Indian. In fact, I believe she has an Indian name. But it may not be her also. I have also wondered if it could be the former congresswoman of uh, Hawaii. I'm trying to remember her name. Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, so I'm not sure who it is. I was not allowed to see the face, but I knew that it, this woman of color would come alongside him and help him get back uh, win over people um, and, and to whatever degree or extent that she helps him that's between the Lord and them but I see him picking a woman of color to come alongside of him to help him in his campaign with the desire ultimately to take him to victory the next now I first prophesied this on October 1st, 2022. It's all documented. I shared it again in December, and I'm sharing it again. We've started to see evidence of this 
China, whether you realize it or not, are on the verge, it's on the verge of crumbling. I know that the media doesn't project it that way, but there will be an internal revolution. In fact, I believe COVID was released or allowed to be to stop them from rioting and bringing about a revolution in 2020. That's why the strict, harsh lockdowns and all of that. I think the people of China, I'll say it, I'll say it this way. The below ground church is about to see above ground results. Freedom. A major marker of this internal revolution will be the end of Xi Jinping's rule. China is about to invade Taiwan. There you see November the, I'm sorry, May the 5th, 2022, and October the 1st, 2022. So there's two there. I think that uh, back in 2021, by the way, and I have this all documented, the Lord showed me, and I actually wrote it down in a prophecy, that Russia would invade Ukraine and that China would invade or attempt to invade uh, Taiwan for the purpose of the the bully Marxist spirit that was trying to raise up with totalitarian power in the earth. And um, so we're praying against the idea of China invading Taiwan, and I think it would be unsuccessful if they did. I think uh, the, the Taiwanese people would um, stop this and stand up against this. Um, and then, of course, there you see October the 1st on the right side of your screen, Chinese revolution begins with the end of Xi Jinping's rule. Next. This was November 18th, 2022. How many of you know recently, how many indictments did Hunter recently get? Was it seven or eight? Something like that. Um, he was indicted, I think, seven or eight times with three of them being felonies, and they're saying he's looking at 17 years in, in prison. I don't wish that on anyone, but the Hunter Biden case, this is November of 2022, will take a centerfold place in the news and tremendously hurt his father. Joe Biden will lose power and will be out of the 2024 election, his health and also will continue to fail, fail, and he will fall, and Kamala will be in power but a short time. Somebody says, "What if it happens, Chris, and it turns out that he that he that he makes it or he finishes his term? Then I will I will apologize. I will. I mean, I'll t if it turns something turns out to be wrong." Uh, I'll take accountability for that. But I'm standing, because I believe, really genuinely believe God showed me this multiple times. Okay? And uh, so anyways, that, by the way, we, we should not put Old Testament standards on New Covenant prophecy. Really what makes you a false prophet is when you prophesy to try to allure people away from the one true God of Israel. It's not when you misinterpret a vision or a dream or you misinterpret a feeling or an impression or a, the spirit of prophecy or you say it wrong. Um, I'm not saying that just to protect myself, but I'm just simply saying I believe this is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And uh, I just don't want anybody to... Uh, we don't want anybody to suffer. Okay, next slide. That's it. That's it.